Right. Like it's, right. I mean, that's well, that's embellished a little bit, but like not actually that much. Who cares if right. you're proficient? And um, what is something you know something that you said before? I feel like trainers often, perhaps because we're in groups of other trainers, I feel like this problem's been exaggerated. You know, in the age of the internet, where we compare ourselves to other colleagues, right? Because mm -hmm. we see other right. colleagues a lot more than perhaps we used to. We we feel like we have to present ourselves as perfect and all-knowing in, in all respects, right? Right. Whereas in every way. the actual best way to build rapport with anybody is to ask for their advice on something. This is the online trainer show, trainer show, trainer show. This is the online trainer show. We shouldn't have a podcast. I don't remember the actual ly lyrics to that. I just remember that the video to that song was Lionel Richie, and he was like, he met this young, young lady at some school of the arts. She uh -huh. was blind. She was blind and she was a sculptor. So that was the love story in that video. It, uh, for those just, you know, I know that we came on in a weird spot. This is the online training show. You're in the right place. Uh, <laughs> however, uh, Catalina was singing one of my favorite Lionel Richie songs, Hello which I believe was off the All Night Long album uh, in 86 Love or 87. Love All Night Long. That's an amazing All song. It's, it's a great song. It's a great song. Mm -hmm. Lionel Richie yeah. just, first of all, if you haven't heard the song, All Night Long, All Night, oh, no. All Night, All Night Long, All Night, yeah, that's the song. But uh, uh -huh. there's a breakdown in that song where it's something like, <laughs> Jumbo, jumbo. And then Lionel Richie goes, yeah, we're going to have a party. Uh, you got to have an uh. So in any case, Lionel Richie just admitted, uh, I think it was on American Idol's Instagram. They asked him the African words in that song. And he said they, they weren't actually words. I literally just made up those sounds. Like they weren't <laughs> actually African words. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny because I just saw this like last week. He was like, actually, they, they they weren't words. I just made up sounds. He's like, people have asked me that for years. He led up like he was going to give this really eloquent, you know, uh, you know, artistic answer about his cultural heritage and how it ties back. He's like, people have asked me that for years. And I just want to go on the record and say that those were not words. I made up those sounds uh, to to uh, to for that song. But in any case, in the in the other song, the lady was blind that Lionel Richie was in love with in the video, the hello video. Is it me you're looking for? Which is really ironic because she's blind. Yeah? She wasn't looking for anybody. But in any case. That's, that would not be considered socially acceptable to say no. It, it, these days, you could not do that these days. You couldn't literally have a song that says, hello, is it me you're looking for? And have a leading woman that's blind right. in the show. But in any case, be it, okay. it was a weird video because she was touching his face like half the video. You know, because, uh, 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 you know, and then she was sculpt, she was simultaneously sculpting a bust of Lionel Richie, which turned out horrendous. Like, oh, she, was, funny. she was terrible, terrible artist. So, Jonathan, anything new happened in that your neck of the woods? Like, like anything... two nights ago, Calvin came into the room. It's like pitch black at like two o'clock in the morning. He came into the room. He can't see anything, right? And he, and he comes in and climbs into bed. And we switched, like, units, like condos that were in here. So I'm sleeping on the other side of the mm -hmm. bed than I normally am. So he came over to me. And he started snuggling with me. So I'm like, hell yeah, I'm getting my snuggles in. So I put my arm around him. Like, <laughs> and uh, and he's like, he's like, mommy. And so I didn't, I didn't say anything because he thought it was, he thought it was Allison. I didn't say anything. I just kept quiet. So I was like, I'm, I'm gonna get my snuggles in. And then he starts feeling around and he feels my beard. And he's like, you're not mommy. And then he was like, <laughs> you have just, lied to me. Oh, man. So, so the blind woman in the Lionel Richie album reminded me of that. Uh, anything anything see, uh, happened in my world? Yeah, I just got back from two nights away in Puerto Vallarta where I went there to see a drag show where there was a man who was the world champion pole dancer who did a one-man show for an hour and a half where he was dancing in eight-inch heels oh, and a thong with um what are, the, what are the things that like strippers put on their nipples that like twirl around whatever those oh are. like right. To, uh, right oh what are they called pasties. yeah so the pasties oh. tassels. tassels so he had yes. so he had, he had tassels that he had on one on each of his butt cheeks and he called them assholes 
and then he <laughs> he would twerk and pop his butt so they would go in circles. And of course, oh, the kicker oh, the sorry. kicker for this is of course Allison got us tickets in the front row. Of oh, course, man. were we invited on stage oh. to partake in the show? We were not. Please tell me there's video. Nah, because it's it you know COVID stuff, so there was no like audience participation, <laughs> which I was not upset about. Um, yeah. <laughs> so it was it was an experience at one point he uh oh put on God. daisy dukes and rollerblades and started rollerblading around oh, nice. the stage nice. um uh, it was it was very uh it, it's it's funny because at the beginning of it like i should preface this this is not the first drag show that i've ever been to um, right. okay. so so my oldest brother is gay is married to a man and um and they have an adopted daughter and i've been to a number of drag shows with them and i actually have had like some really interesting conversation to them about it because i mean it's just it's cultural right it's not mm -hmm. like right. i asked him i was like is this like the type of thing that turns you on he's like yeah, for some people like maybe it is but this is our culture like mm -hmm. like these outfits is right. our culture it's not like we like walk around and you know with with feathers with like thongs right. or whatever it's like maybe some people do and uh <laughs> and so it was it was not the first drag show that i had been to but what's what's particularly interesting is how desensitized you get to it how quickly you get to it which I think has, so, you know, at the beginning of it, I was like, oh God, this is, you know, there is, there is too much ass tassels in my face right now. Um, <laughs> like and then the five minutes and you were like, what? Like, it's fine. This is normal. The like, the like phallic confetti gun that he shot off right at us in the front row. Nice. I'm, like, I'm like picking it off one by one and like just putting it on Allison, right? Oh man, and, but, that's fire. But by the second half after the intermission, it's just like, I guess this is what we're doing now. Like it's normal. And <laughs> I feel like that be. kind of, let me, let me segue this friends. I feel like that kind of goes into the topic of our show today. Today about how scary it is to tell your story and put yourself out there public on the internet because once you oh do goodness. it it's scary when you first do it but then you become desensitized to it pretty quickly oh, and feel yeah. more open to to do it more often so oh. bam segue first of all second of all um i'm really happy that that was the last time that i'm gonna have that experience <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever see the, the, the yeah. Between Two Phones with Zach Galifianakis? Oh, yes. Where he, yes. Had, where he had President Obama on, and the first question that he asks is, so uh, how does it feel to be the last black president? Yes. <laughs> 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 like, how does this feel it's to be timing. the last pole dancing drag strip show? gay pole dancing drag strip show that I go to in Mexico. How does it feel to have it be the last one of those that I that I go to? Uh, and I'll tell you, it feels good. It feels good. Yeah, but I think, I, think, I think the point, the greater point here is just how important it is to just experience things, experience different cultures, experience different ways of doing. I mean, like, uh, obviously it's not, you know, my cup of tea, but Allison, you know, we had we had a, a friend of ours that was going to it and invited Allison and she bought two tickets. She's like, John, do you want to go? I was like, hell yeah. Like, like, uh, like, just say hell yeah to things, right? Yes. For no other reason than you can talk about how interesting and weird it was on a podcast. But at the end of the day, I mean, what? Let's let's talk about some like really funny, pithy, motivational saying, like your life is the sum total of your experiences. Like, get out there. Right. Get mm -hmm. some experiences. See some yep. dude wearing a thong with assholes dancing on a pole in front of you. <laughs> you know, like because how That's would you appreciate? Well, how else would you appreciate all of the times when you're not seeing that if you've never seen yeah. it? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Exactly. <laughs> That's an interesting perspective. <laughs> anyway, how was your couple? Like, you days? don't. You don't, <laughs> don't really know. You don't really know what it's like to experience life without assholes until you've actually experienced assholes. Sure. <laughs> Otherwise, how would you know that people didn't have on assholes? Uh, I think that's that's probably that's probably the quote card for this week. <laughs> if there is a quote card, I, th I think that's it. Mm. That's very interesting. I I love I love your first story too about catfishing your son. Yes, uh, that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, this guy, this guy, by the way, you can look him up. His name is Stephen Wretchless. He was a semifinal on America's Got Talent. Like he's legit. Like he's oh, wow. like, the, like, I mean, 
pole dance. So, so the reason that we went is our friend is a pole dancing instructor, and so she like follows this mm-hmm. guy and loves him, and mm-hmm. he lives in Puerto Vallarta and is doing this like one man show because the theater is open back up and whatever. And so, it, if you look him up, like holy crap, it is athletic. It's an <laughs> art form. It really is. It takes an insane amount of skill. I tried it once or twice, and I chicken out. I was like, "Man, it hurts." No, right. <laughs> and then I said, "I quit." So I'm like, "Okay, I'm so I can't make money like that. So what do I got then?" Online training, it is fine. <laughs> so this dude was doing it in eight-inch heels. <laughs> Yeah, online training, the, the, the backup when you can't make it as a pole dancer. Um, but so this dude this dude was doing it in eight inch heels and he was doing it in five inch like moon boot heels up above his knees. Wow. That's pretty, awesome. like, yeah. I mean, it's pretty impressive athletically. It is. It really is. Doing. All jokes aside, it truly is. So I'm so jealous that you got to see that because I know I would I would love it. You would you would have loved it. You would have been hooting and hollering in the front row. <laughs> I can only imagine. I can only imagine it. John, one other thing I like to say that I saw on the internet regarding you, uh, and I don't know what the ad's for, but there's some recent, and you probably don't know either, there's, your face is so many places in, what am in regards I, what to am online I, training. What am I doing today? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what you were selling. I don't know what your pitch was. Yeah, you've you already knows. bought everything that I'm selling, so you don't need to. Yeah, I've already bought it. Yeah, that's that's all I need to know. I know when I see the pitch, I've already got it. Like, yeah, I already bought that thing, or or I work or I work there. Like, one of the two <laughs> things is going on. Either I've already bought it or I work there. But uh, but in that thing, you had your online training, uh, online trainer academy bottle, uh, and I was so pleased that the little. The little strap part oh, yeah. of yours was broken What's too. Right here? Yeah, look. yeah, that made me so. Yeah, that made me so happy because mine's been broken for so long, and I always end up just cutting mine off. I, just, I, just I cut mine off too. To I mean, I've had I have like ten of these. Right, I just have so but, many. Yeah, but things. that but it was in the ad that way oh, pictured, was it? and that that yeah that yeah <laughs> it looked like that in the ad, and I was like, that's brought me so much comfort to know that the uh, the the head man the the boss well Amber's the boss, but that the head person the, the figurehead. The person whose name is most sure. commonly attached to the to the uh, to to the organization is, is was jacked up. That made yeah. me really happy. So I was going to throw mine away and beg for another one, but I feel we, like we don't have any more. We stopped ordering them. You know what? I I love these bottles. These bottles are fantastic. Like these water They're bottles awesome. are awesome. awesome. They really the problem are. Problem is they've gotten so much more expensive since we started oh, really? ordering them. Yeah, we started ordering them in like 2016, and I'd order like 1,500 at a time. They were like 12, 13 Canadian dollars each, and then we'd ship them around the world. Well, now they're like 18 and a half dollars each, and the shipping has more than doubled. So for right. us, right. people are like, oh, can I buy another bottle? It's like, it would cost me $60 to get it to you. Right. Wow. Like, I, like yeah, you're not so... going to pay me $60 for this water bottle, right? Right, right. I'm, I'm certainly not. Uh, I can tell you that. Uh, you know, and, and another interesting thing, because my my initial thought was oh the bottle oh that's what it was it was the the online training academy version four is coming yes we got a big enrollment that's going to ha- happen soon we got a contest going on right mm-hmm. now but perhaps you want to talk about that Jonathan, well, not the contest because by the time this is over the, the by the time this is out the contest oh, the contest will be jacked up well we'll, we'll reminisce over the contest 0. the contest is great talk about version yeah, 4.0 yeah. of the online training academy yeah. the leading educational program for online trainers uh trying to get online and um i don't have a piece of paper to, to talk about the ad that's all right i got a sheet of paper right here you set yourself apart you what else we got set yourself yeah. apart boost your credentials and gain a huge competitive advantage in the online health and fitness market uh online trainer.com slash ota uh the online trainer there academy uh so initially i thought you were giving away bottles with that contest because it says i'm going to give a gift to mm. everybody just for so, so i was like well, holy shit! Like I gotta, I gotta enroll in this thing. It's my gateway to a yeah. third bottle because uh, I've had two previously. Got, Maybe I shouldn't say that. Bottle, I don't know. Eh? Yeah, I got, I got so the black one, but I got a red one. That was the only order of the black bottles. We only there's only like 750 of those that exist. Oh, really? So this is the Special. limited. This is the it's limited, limited edition. edition. We only did one uh, order of those because we're like, well, it's not really on brand. So got, it's not great. I got, I got Molly's sticker yeah, on it though. Just... I got the, uh, I got the Echo Twin. <laughs> accentuates the bottle congratulations to molly by the way book's awesome i got i got my book uh you guys probably got a book uh so it's a great book strong women lift each other up that. fantastic book yeah. i'll give it i'll give it some yeah, it's great yeah great, great book it's pro- de- definitely props to it i've learned so much talk, talk about telling your story uh, i mean molly's prime right. example i mean that's 
freaking awesome, man. I worked out today. I worked out today. I followed my OTC workout, online trainer coaching, which is us outsourcing fitness for, for clients, uh, for, for coaches. Uh, so threw myself in there. Uh, and while I was doing that, I was listening to the audiobook of Strong Women Lift Each Other Up, uh, Molly Galbred. And uh, I had, a, uh, I had a, an email up on my phone from Amber uh, and a picture of Keto uh, as my screensaver. So I incorporated everyone. There was no inclusion of any Jonathan Goodman items other than the bottle. But other than that, every other, every other person that's important in any way in my life I, you know, was a part of that workout this morning. Uh, there were a couple of James Clear quotes that ran through my mind, Jonathan, so I hope that's helpful, as always. Yeah, I just feel so motivated when I hear from him. Um, but we're talking about telling our story to, today, right? Like the, uh, you know, how, how frightening it could be to tell your story. We've, we've told our stories kind of sort of here on the, on the online trader show. We're talking, about, we're talking um, about how scary it is to get over the initial hump of right. sharing perhaps personal stuff about yourself like to get over that hump of saying i'm gonna put myself out there in a way mm -hmm. that is perhaps different or unique or personal or um transparent and get over yeah, that yeah. getting over that initial hump of doing it because it's sort of all down it's downhill from there like once you do it once you know the the comfort level starts to rise and i'm glad that we're having this episode uh, because it's something that Keto really struggles with. Like, we just don't know that much about her. So, uh, so, I'm so, a mystery. Oh, yeah. she's, such a, she's so mysterious. So, you know, perhaps through this broadcast today, we could coax her into sharing just, you know, the smallest details of her life. Yeah, we don't even know. We don't know uh, if there's know, cellulite, if there's not cellulite. We don't know anything. No, right, right. right. <laughs> I'm not even sure what comes after the O in Keto, to be perfectly honest with you. Uh, so I see what all about. Her information she's not something that she shares readily with maybe we could talk her into that maybe we could talk <laughs> Catalina into sharing her first name with the public yeah it'd be like, <laughs> oh, like a broadcast premiere it'd be like a cnn scoop like a fox news X <laughs> whatever you want whatever your station your choice she's shaking her head no nope whatever i'd rather i'd rather wear assholes and, <laughs> <laughs> and castle away <laughs> oh man i'm wearing assholes right now so, <laughs> let's get into so many circles <laughs> and so much thick leather and so many limestones <laughs> and so much confetti. <laughs> we got we got over sparkled. No, it's just... You know, there's there's a point where you go sparkle blind, though, isn't it? Like you like like they say nose blind. You just can't smell the scent anymore. Like, isn't there a point where it's just you just had enough glitter? Like the point. The point <laughs> okay. is, you should not need to open a second container of glitter. That's the point. <laughs> Kettle's, Kettle's got a request to speak card. Yes. Go, go yes. Ahead. Oh yeah, because there's a story here. There's a story. So speaking of glitter and Please speaking of like phallic looking uh, glitter throwing guns. So ahead. my story is that I was at a bachelorette in in a resort in Mexico. And that's, I mean, you already know what bachelorettes are like, right? Like everything is penis shaped because why wouldn't you? Like, I don't right. understand it, but everything is penis shaped, right? So, uh, so everybody's drinking their drinks out of like penis shaped uh, straws, like the whole nine yards. But then also we had this little tiny, very shiny, very glittery, uh, kind of like a confetti in the shape of, a, you know, penis, penises. Penis? I don't know what the what the yes. plural is. This is this is a conundrum. <laughs> so please correct my grammar if I got it wrong. Look that up. <laughs> so, thank you. And so then we all had the wonderful idea of like grabbing one of those little shiny penis shaped things and we stuck it on our cheek. And then we went oh, to like no. yeah to, to like the dance place and we like you know we partied all night. You can imagine how that ended up. And then the next morning. For the wedding, we discovered that those little fino shaped glitters left the marking of the color on our cheek. Oh <laughs> so my we god! All, yes, so we all were like, oh my, god. Yep. oh my yeah. god! So we're trying to like slather on makeup and bronzer, like anything trying to 
Because I had like a like a hot pink penis on my cheek. <laughs> and my friend had a blue one. The other one had a green one. Like the bride had a yellow. Like I don't even know. It was just. <laughs> oh my gosh. It was amazing. So multiple. So I probably multiple. The answer for this is either penises or peens. Just for the record. Oh, no, thank no, you. I, I I I would not have guessed that. Peens. Thank you for that. You're welcome, because I don't know what this is going to do to my search history. And <laughs> the odds you're going to start getting, girl, <laughs> singles in your area. Oh, my gosh. Amber, bless you so, and those cookies on your computer from this point on. on you. God bless you. God bless you. So I feel like we're very good into like the whole how to tell your story comfortably. Yes. Part yes. of the. Is such a like. I mean, in, uh, like obviously, this has been a very um, inappropriate episode, but uh, I <laughs> you like started that, it, I sir. You here. started it. Started. Oh my god! Oh my I saw gosh. so much in the last couple of days. Uh, <laughs> I saw so much. And it wasn't even just in the theater, like Puerto Vallarta is very gay friendly. The amount of really, 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 really short shorts that exist there. Right. Uh, glorious. I'm oh, just amazed that these guys it. have so little leg hair. Anyway, the... <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, what we're doing with this podcast is kind of showing and not telling, oh. is it not? You know, we're, we're kind of... What, what I hope is happening with this podcast is giving you permission to say, okay, well, we're going to take ourselves really seriously in how we do our work, but like, we're going to have fun doing it. And we're going to try to find segues. We're going to hang out with friends and like deliver material and everybody's going to bring something different and nobody's going to compete or hate on each other. And um, just really trying to show you that it's okay to do stuff this way. Right. And I, and I hope, I hope that that is actually doing more to give you some sort of permission to start to figure out how to be yourself and be comfortable being yourself a little bit um, than anything we could say, right? Like, like there's no, I don't know, maybe I shouldn't put words into any of your mouths. I don't have any advice on how to be yourself on the internet. I don't have a step-by-step -step process. Step one, do this. Step two, do that. I have no idea right. um, of, of how to do that. This isn't the type of thing where we're like, we're going to give you advice on how to be yourself. Uh, no, mm -hmm. I mean, it, it takes some time. Listen to the earlier episodes like we were stiff. Yeah. Yeah. That's that a great example cool. because I was thinking... I was thinking about that recently, how if we listen now, at, like in comparison to how we started, like the flow of our show feels totally different. And it's nothing except the fact that we have practiced twice a week, every single week since we started. Mm -hmm. I mean, you guys more than me, because you know, I miss episodes whenever the heck I feel like it. <laughs> um, no, but seriously, it's just like the it's consistent more practice. you have in 2021. So... <laughs> <laughs> that's true that's true i'm rocking 2021 so um but like one thing also that i want to kind of like highlight is that especially like even if you already are in a practice of sharing your story it can still feel scary at times like i can tell you right now for example the episode that we talked about mental health mm -hmm. that i really spoke a lot about my personal experience and the stuff that i face mm -hmm. the next morning like i woke up with with what we would call like a almost kind of like a a vulnerability hangover mm -hmm. and it's basically that it's just like you're kind of like oh my god did i say too much did i share too much did i open up myself to uh, to be hurt some way is somebody gonna use this again like you kind of go through a moment of like a little bit of a panic because now you put this stuff out there and you feel like you can't take it back which is totally true but that doesn't have to be a bad thing right. and what has come as a result is like a lot of messages from you guys who are listening who were kind enough to reach out and say like hey thank you for that episode or hey you know mm -hmm. what i'm what i heard i needed to hear that because that's my experience too and thank you for saying that because you have no idea how much you guys help me be reminded that our stories matter even if it feels freaking scary in the time you're helping someone because we got you're a lot not of messages an island about that episode you you a got a lot carolina you got a lot of messages about that episode specifically mm, so I it matters i still 
I still get messages about it. Uh, somebody, yep. somebody sent me. Uh, I think I shared it in our little Facebook group. If I'm not mistaken, somebody mm -hmm. shared something with me the other day about that episode in particular. Um, you know, and and when you for for those of out those of you out there for me precision nutrition, um, in the level two certification, it really dives into like motiv motivational interviewing, coaching, uh, holding space for your client. And one of the one of the uh, concepts that you'll learn in the level two certification for precision nutrition is uh, is helping your client understand the humanity in what they're experiencing because we often feel like we're isolated in the things that we're going through, um, and that's one of the key components that prevents us from processing those feelings, emotions, being able to act in a way that's in our own best interest. So one of the key components of, of the uh, of motivational interviewing in, in that certification is explaining to the person that you're dealing with or helping them come to their own understanding that there are more people dealing with the thing that you're dealing with than just you. You're not alone. It's yeah. the isolation that can be an issue. And that's one of the reasons why I think we can all talk eloquently about why sharing your story is helpful, even if we don't know the how specifically. But that's one of the reasons why it's so it can be so helpful from the business perspective, but even from the perspective of humanity to share your story because you've gone through things that the people who might potentially hire you don't have any clue about. Not only do they not have a clue about it, they assume that you have never been through certain layers of difficulty in your life. Yeah. It's one of the things that prevents people from hiring you because it can be very, um, it can be very frightening to hire someone to help you improve in an area of your life that you think the other person has perfected. There's yeah. a sense of embarrassment that you can experience in doing that. I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to go to the dentist cause they're going to judge me cause I didn't floss last week. Like it's just sort of human nature mm -hmm. to, uh, to compare yourself to someone in the area of expertise. Sharing your story really does humanize you in a way that actually makes you more approachable as a yeah. professional not less approachable. Uh, would you guys like to sort of speak to that? Yes, I have a great example that I, that popped to mind uh, as you were talking, Ren. And uh, you guys know Brian Cran. Uh, I mean, he's been he's a legend, like in the fitness industry, was, right? Like he was the anonymous PTDC. He was the first ever anonymous editor of the PTDC. Really? really? I didn't know that. Okay, so yeah. he's awesome nobody, in many nobody ways. Nobody knew that he worked for us. Yeah, so he's he's fantastic. fantastic. He's been around forever and, of course, super experienced and everything. He is like in his mid or late 50s. And um, and he's, I guess, from a different, I, I don't know, he's very much like a bodybuilder kind of guy. So I think mm -hmm. he's the kind of person, and, and I may be totally, I may totally have the wrong impression of him, but he strikes me as the kind of man who would totally cringe at the idea of like, ew, what do you mean? I got to be vulnerable. Like, oh, kind of like, oh, like, you know, like that, just a way of wording it. It's just like, oh, I'm not comfortable with this feeling kind of thing. However, he does it very well because he talks about being a dad a little bit older, about how your priorities change when you have a kid, about how he's no longer the 20 year old killing himself for hours at the gym. That is his story, and that makes him so relatable to other men in his yeah. age group, in his life situation. So, so even so him, let me, let me without realizing it, yeah. Let me just fact check that because he's he's approaching fifty. He's not in his mid to late fifties. No, I, I said mid want... to late forties. Oh, 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 I heard mid to late fifties. Yeah. Okay. You're right. Yeah. No, no, no. He's he's pushing cool. fifty. He's almost there. But yeah. anyway, um, so yeah, so even though he's maybe not the person who would think of himself mm -hmm. as the kind to share his story and be vulnerable, he is, and he kills it when he does it because you see the comments like so many other guys. Oh my God, it's so true. I, I relate. I see that. So that's it. That's what we mean when we say share your story. Share how your current life circumstances shape the decisions that you make with your health. And because because Brian shared his story the way that he did, he got a book deal from. Uh, well, host, but like men's health, to write a book that's literally called Muscle After 40. Amazing. Oh, that's awesome. Wow, so there you go. that's awesome. great. See, so, I mean, there's the value of it, right? Wrote it, I think he wrote it with Lou, actually, if I'm not mistaken. I think Lou is involved in, I may be wrong. I think Lou is, in, I don't see his name on the book, but I think Lou is involved in the project, too. Nice. Losing everything. <laughs> so, so, 
So let me ask you this question. I'll pose this question to the panel, uh, panel of, the panel of experts that we have here. Uh, on, on an individual basis, like when you're not when you're dealing with like Nike or freaking, you know, American Express or something like that. But on an individual basis, if you're going to hire a hire a sole proprietor, a coach, for instance, but not necessarily just a coach. Uh, but if you're going to hire somebody like that to help you affect some type of positive evolution in your life, do you are you a, even able to hire them if you don't know something about them? Like, is it even attractive? Is there any way that someone based on their credentials solely uh, can pique your interest in terms of you hiring them no. to work closely with them? Is that even possible? No, I mean, if it was a referral, maybe, but but if there's no referral or anything like that, I mean, there's just no reason to even listen to them. It's not even that right. I wouldn't right. not hire them specifically. It's just that there is virtually no chance that I would ever come across right. them. And even if right. I did like, come across you... them, pay attention to them enough to figure out whether or not right. they might be potentially right for me. There's virtually no chance. So, so, and I, I'm going to, I'm going to expand on that a little bit and I'm going to go to Kato. Like, so, so Kato, even if you see me doing the most perfect squats, every time you scroll up my, up the timeline, mm -hmm. even if you see me, uh, you know, you, you see my, my physicality. A lot of people will judge on that. You know, I'm, I'm ripped. Uh, you know, I got my shirt off half the time. Uh, I clearly know what I'm talking about, but you don't know anything about me other than the fact that I'm credentialed. Like, even with that, it, it is, even at that point, is there is there any way that you hire that person to work closely with you and you just don't know anything else about them? Nope. I can't imagine. Not, not in your mind? Nope. I cannot imagine that. I mean, you don't you don't know if they're... Married, single, kids or not, you know, philosophy on life, um, what they like, what they don't like, what they believe in. You don't know any of that stuff. And, but they're ex, but they seem to be absolutely proficient uh, in, in what they do. Still, proficiency, still no? no. Proficiency is an excess. Proficiency is, an, is, is a commodity. Who cares if you're proficient? Right. It's not hard to be proficient in the 80-20 of exercising. I mean, really, if well, you know how to sit down and stand up, you're, you're probably proficient <laughs> for 95% of the clients that are out there. Right, like it's, right. I mean, that's, well, that's embellished a little bit, but like not actually that much. Who cares right. if you're proficient? And um, what is something, you know, something that you said before, I feel like trainers often, perhaps because we're in groups of other trainers, I feel like this problem has been exaggerated, you know, in the age of the internet where we compare ourselves to other colleagues. Right, because mm -hmm. we see other right. colleagues a lot more than perhaps we used to. We we feel like we have to present ourselves as perfect and all knowing in, in all respects. Right? Right. Whereas in every way. The actual best way to build rapport with anybody is to ask for their advice on something. Exactly right. Mm -hmm. That's exactly mm -hmm. right. It's interesting that you bring up that point. And I wanna I wanna go to Amber really quick for the last question. Let's because do we it, know Amber. that Jonathan's relatively Get that fan yeah, off. Jonathan's relatively relatively unfeeling and Keto's petty, so that <laughs> that colored their answer. You know, but Amber's actually a good human. She's the she represents the best of us here on this production. But that Amber uh, is legitimately a better human than all of us. She's she's <laughs> better than all of us. I mean, it's and I don't think it. I don't think it needed to be said. I think it's nice that we articulated right. it. But I think the view, the the listeners already know this. Like this isn't this isn't unknown to to the folks that are familiar with our production here. Uh, but Amber, you know, you, any just any shot of you be called three petty selfish amigos and Amber. <laughs> <laughs> and Amber. <laughs> and Amber. So any any can you see yourself hiring somebody if, you, if they got no story, Amber? Is that is that possibility for you? No, I mean. I think when hiring someone, there's a degree of vulnerability just mm -hmm. in the act of, of hiring someone. And so when trying to choose someone, there's the credentials, although help, but like, I want to find someone that's going to understand me. And if I'm going to be able to be authentically myself with someone that I have to be choosy about who, who that is. So. Right. Right. I think another, so, oh, sorry, Ren. Go ahead, Ghetto. Oh, no, another kind of like important part of this is that also, especially in a coaching situation, for me personally, I know myself, I'm like, if I'm, if I'm going to hire you, I need to respect you. 
because otherwise, yeah. whatever you tell me to do, I'm not going to listen because that's the rebel in me. I'm like, screw this. Like, I'm not going to do whatever this person is telling me to do if I don't have that sense of respect. And I can only get respect from seeing their journey, understanding what they have overcome, uh, seeing the stuff that they've, uh, how they've put everything together in their life to get to the point where they are. Like, that to me is very inspiring. And that's the a kind of person that I want to listen to and learn from mm -hmm. and be coached by because I respect that. Absolutely. Can I give Absolutely. an assignment? Yeah. I love this I'd love to. I, I, all, all I want is to get, get an because assignment. Because I feel like, I I feel like the entire idea of like, okay, let's, let's rip off the bandaid. You know, mm -hmm. at one mm -hmm. point it's good to say, oh, like, whoa, setting an example, whoa, acting like idiots on the internet. So like, you should feel comfortable <laughs> acting like an idiot on the internet, but it's easier said than done. I mean, I've been acting like an idiot on the internet for 10 years. So <laughs> it's a long time. Like that, practice. <laughs> not like me saying, you know, in 10 years time, maybe you can talk about your experience at a Mexican drag show on a podcast to thousands of people. Right. <laughs> you know, it's oh, like, man. like maybe uh, life goals, yeah, life goals, right? <laughs> on a, on a Tuesday night for no other reason than your wife asked you, not knowing that she booked a ticket in the front row and you'd get phallic confetti shot at you. Um, <laughs> yeah. I think an assignment could really be useful here. And so if you're listening mm -hmm. and you really have been struggling to be a little bit more transparent and share your story and do things that you feel awkward about. Perhaps here's something to, to try today. Choose your social media network, could be Instagram, could be Facebook, doesn't matter if it's Instagram, pick a picture to go with it, whatever, doesn't matter. And, and, and follow the line, um, today I felt insecure about myself when X, Mm. Anybody else ever feel that way? Question mark. Oh, and that's, that's a great question. <laughs> because all of us feel insecure about themselves at some point over the course of the <laughs> <Right>. day. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. And, uh, and, and I think you will be very, uh, I, I think what comes back from that will be very telling. You're going to get a lot of people being like, oh my God, I'm so glad you said yes. that. And this will be yes. like your most engaged post like if you're sitting there and you're like i'm not getting any 100%. engagement it's like because you're talking about shit 100 like <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. i saw one of those things the other day uh post and i know that he's somebody that struggled with engagement on social media and i know coaches have worked with him and like trying to get him to do this and he, he posts this picture of him doing an overhead squat with one of those like logs with with handles you know mm -hmm. and it's uh -huh. him like with the log over his head doing an overhead squat talking about how important form is for like strong man overhead squat training it's like i know your clientele <laughs> is women over 40. like yeah no shit. you're not getting engagement from the people that you want to be training right like you yeah. think any you think any of them are going to look at this or think that you're right for them in any way shape or form like how you train is totally cool but is completely irrelevant if yeah. you're completely irrelevant. trying to tell your story. So, but I mean, all of us are insecure about something. And, mm -hmm. and my guess is those insecurities are probably like two or three <clears throat> different buckets. Like I compare myself to others. I don't feel like I'm good enough. I'm not mm -hmm. achieving right. as much right. as I'd like to achieve. Absolutely. Like, Absolutely. like basically that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it boils down to that. Right? Like everybody right. feels those three things every single day, myself included. 100%. I compare yeah. myself 100%. to James Clear all the time, and I hate him <laughs> because I know and, and you that he has done so much better than me in so many things <laughs> that I take pride in. Can I tell I a story him. about that real quick? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Well, yeah, well, uh, never so my podcast. So I love it. Talk to James I was going to troll you really hard. <laughs> but it didn't work out so i can tell on myself because it didn't work out so okay. you remember when we did the cameos the videos cameos so i reached out to his people to see if i could get him to do a cameo for john <gasps> that, that would have been <laughs> like, amazing like, one day you'll get there and you know one of those things oh my god he didn't have time uh but i tried so oh, that's brilliant <laughs> doesn't even have enough time 
to flip his <laughs> he's so busy and so successful he doesn't even have enough time to flip his phone around and be like hey dude yeah <laughs> don't you wish don't you wish you could, you could, be a, you could, you could do what i do um what's that uh oh god what's that song Oh, don't you wish you? Don't you wish you? Don't you wish your girlfriend, girlfriend was, was like hot? Yeah. I would, I, don't you wish your book sold as many as me? <laughs> like, I don't know. <laughs> don't you wish your book you? sounded as good as mine? <laughs> don't you? Don't you? Doesn't even have time for that. Oh my god. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so totally wrapped up in in uh, in the in the business of in the success, time Jonathan. we were just talking okay. about this, he probably sold a hundred books. <laughs> and now I can't I can't stop figuring I'm picturing him now dancing like the pussycat dolls like with the chairs and stuff because that's that's who sings his song so I'm like I have this it's, image now I don't know what to do with it help it's, it's all mixing in with Jonathan's story for me so I'm picturing James Clear and eight, eight inch heels I, 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 and I can't, I can't get it out like now. compare themselves to me in the way that I compare myself to other people like James Absolutely. And James compares Absolutely. himself to other people like, I don't know, call it like a Malcolm Gladwell. I mean, I don't know if he does or not. Yeah, but, Gladwell, maybe a John knows, Maxwell, something right? like that. Right, like, mm -hmm. like everybody, I mean, up up to Bezos, like everybody compares themselves mm -hmm. to right. somebody else. And that's yeah. just like common human emotion. Uh, so yeah. today I felt insecure about myself when X... Does anybody else, has anybody else felt that way? Just see what comes back. It's, 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 it's a great question. It's a great Love question. It. I, I, I can tell you across, across the board, when, I, when I'm speaking with coaches as an, as an online trainer academy mentor, and they tell me that they have issues with their unique selling proposition, their USP, first thing that I do across the board every single time is I ask them, what's your story? Hey, can you do me a favor? Tell me your story about how you got into fitness and then tell me your story about how you got it got into coaching fitness uh yeah just just share that with me and they and probably i don't think this is an exaggeration to say probably 90 percent of the time when they feel like their usp doesn't work it has nothing to do with their story like it's completely in the opposite direction of all their life experiences and everything that they told me that's ever mattered in their existence and i and and the chat and when they I like to give them something actionable at the end of the call. I like to ask three questions. Um, do you know what to do? Can you do it? When are you going to get started? That's how I like to sort of close mm -hmm. out the call. Um, you know, I think Jason Maxwell did that to me in OTA level two, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. But in any case, um, so what I like to give them is, they, what should I do? Well, first of all, the USP that we've come up with, share that. You know, put it in your bio, where blah, blah, blah. But second, to the extent that you feel comfortable being transparent, share your story. Uh, well, I just don't get that many people that, uh, that, you know, that, that respond to my content, blah, blah, well, share your story, see what happens. When we, when we talk next week, you let me know what happens. And across the board, categorically, it's always the most engaging post they've ever done ever. Oh my gosh, so many people responded. I can't believe all the people, so many people like me. I'm like, bro, or sis, like, this is the, this is the human connection that you're missing. Yeah. This is the element that's missing from your business. The, the ability to commit, connect to the rest of humanity. And if you don't connect to the rest of the humans out there, you're, you're in this business in the way that we're doing it, you're not going to be able to build a business. Like it's just, it's not going to work. People don't care what you know. Uh, what's, I, I think what's the John Maxwell thing. People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Mm -hmm. um, but that cliche aside, there's like Jonathan said, there's a lot of coaches out there that know squats and they know eating spinach and drinking your water. Mm -hmm. uh, that doesn't differentiate it complicated. in our business at all. It ain't complicated. No. It's, the, it's not that the complicated. The seven-year-old grandmother who had nef never lifted weights before in her life that just wanted to retain her function, every single trainer in my neighborhood could have trained her. Why do you think mm -hmm. she stayed right. with me for six years and referred me literally at one point, I could count eight different clients that she had directly referred. Like, like her awesome. and direct referrals made up something like 70% of my total clientele. Why do you think that is? Mm -hmm. Has nothing to do with me telling her to <laughs> sit down on a bench and, st and stand back up. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. 100%.
One hundred percent. So that's a that's a great question. That would you repeat that question just one more time, John? Because it's so good. Uh, if to the extent that you can remember it, I know you're getting up there in years. Um, <laughs> but what, what was the, what was what was the question again? Can you was just <laughs> completely uncalled for? <laughs> it was, but it was enjoyable. Uh, it didn't have to be necessary. I just need to want to do it. No, it was just uh, like, hey, hey, John, can you uh, you're welcome. You uh, come over here for a second. I have a question to ask you. Oh, kicking the nuts. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like for, <laughs> you're welcome. Just, for no you're way. welcome, sir. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this. The stubble's getting a little gray, my friend. Everything hurts. Uh, Everything hurts all the time. Every, every, welcome. Welcome to my world. Every freaking thing hurts. God knows. What's the question? Uh, yeah. Uh, today I felt insecure about myself when. Does anybody else feel that way? It's a great question. Great question. Put put that up on your post. I'm I'm gonna be I'm gonna be looking for that post on the internet. Uh, and I'm gonna give away nothing. Uh, when I see it, nothing. but I'll feel good about the fact knowing that you heard it here. Uh, you'll once again, you'll win nothing from me, nothing. Uh, but but you'll you'll win something for yourself. It's going to be a breakthrough <laughs> moment for you because you're going to be surprised by how many people that post resonates with. Some people are going to respond directly. Some people you're going to get DMs. Yep. Uh, get ready for the DMs. Some people are going to DM you, uh, and I can I can guarantee that because I've had the. Experience We've all here had the experience of sharing our story, uh, you know, for the purposes of being somewhat as transparent as we, we feel comfortable being uh, at the time. Uh, anything else? We got anything else today? Kettle, you got anything to add here? Amber, you we, good? We got to go. We're good. Yeah. We got to go. Yeah, everybody's double far. Uh, <laughs> so uh, show notes. Show notes can be found at onlinetraining.com slash podcast. Go get you some show notes, man. You deserve it. Uh, Jonathan's book, Catfishing for Parents, will be out later this year. Uh, you know, if you're not getting your love, enough love as daddy, it's okay to pretend that you're mine. Uh, I think the drag queen thing was a little bit of research on Jonathan's behalf. Be on the, be on the, lookout. Be on the yeah. lookout for the OTA branded assholes. Also, they're coming out with the OTA. You're logo. still looking you're in Mexico, right? I probably look on Etsy to send you tassels, but you're in Mexico. It won't be funny by the time you get to Canada. So. <laughs> oh my god! No more oh. water bottles. They're too expensive. Now we're sending please. apples. <laughs> please, please record and send us your unboxing videos of PC. See, see, don't want to. It's been a riveting episode of the online training show. <laughs> Uh, I had one person tell me we phoned it in last time. I didn't listen to the days, but he was like, "Hey, you guys, you guys kind of phoned that one in." I'll see you guys the video. I video. You sent me the video on uh, on Instagram. Nathan, the thing, uh, he, he, the golf coach. He was like, "Hey, you guys kind of phoned it in," but he also gave us some suggestions. For, yeah, <laughs> he's like, "Yeah, you guys kind of phoned it in," but I still liked it. Uh, I got some suggestions for some topics for you guys. You ever, ever thought about talking about this? So I'm shopping. I'm editing the video now so I can. Presented in Dude, one format. That's that is a great piece of advice. That is like every time that Allison asks me to fold laundry, I do the shittiest job ever and put it away, so that she never asks me to do it again. I just never asked you. Do, do the shittiest job you possibly can on the podcast, so that other people start to do the work for you and choose the right. topics. That is legitimately a good strategy. Oh man! Terrible. Oh Terrible man! Advice. Oh. Follow us on Pinterest for more creativity tips. Uh, we'll see you next time on the online trainer show. Somebody do the jingle. Jingle, jingle. Throw that laundry, finding you throw that, again throw that laundry somewhere close to the hamper. It doesn't have to go in. Just get it close. <laughs> it's not the no. Oh, my God. No. Oh, man. <laughs> Alright, I gotta run. Bye, Bye guys. This is the online trainer show. Trainer show. Trainer show. This is the online trainer show. We shouldn't have a podcast.